26-year-old Peter Panthier Jr. unknowingly walking side by side with his killer, who suddenly points a gun at his head and fires this past Saturday night on Grasmere Terrace. This is Peter Panthier Jr. His family had just immigrated here from the Dominican Republic. I thought it was just him that had immigrated here by himself, but I was listening to the story this morning, and apparently him and his, fam him and his family had moved here. He was actually a teacher in the Dominican Republic. From what I could tell by listening to the stories, he had a degree from a university in the Dominican Republic. And when he came to America, he was pursuing a degree from a university here. He worked a nine to five job. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe he worked at a warehouse. Everyone who describes him is saying that he was a good dude. No involvement in the streets. And on top of that, the police are even saying that he had no known gang ties which means a lot nowadays because the gangs are all over social media and so are the police. So now that we know who Peter Panther is, we need to have a real conversation. And I'm talking to us in the black community and the brown community too, since now we have this black and brown coalition. Peter Panther was not about that life. And us in the black and brown communities, we know what that means. We know what it means to be about that life and not about that life. I'm not about that life. When you see me, I got my yellow on, I'm going to work, or I'm coming home from work. When I say I'm in the trenches, I either got a shovel in my hand or some pipe in my hand. I'm just like Peter Panther. Like, I'm getting up every day or every night, and I'm going to work. I'm not about that life. And see, I was raised in a chocolate city, and I've been in situations like this where I could have got my head blown off. But thankfully, I had a father who was also raised in a chocolate town, and he raised me to understand that these things can happen. When you are not about that life, and you go around people who are about that life, you can get your head blown off, and they will tell you that. And we wanna sit up here and pretend like it's not self-proclaimed savages and demons and killers walking around our community and we too afraid to say anything. So this happens. And the average black person is just sick of this shit. Latinos, y'all might be new to this. The black and brown coalition is new, but the average black person is sick of this. The black teenagers, the average black teenager, the average black young person, people like Peter Panther, they sick of this shit. And they waiting for us to say something. I'm 40 years old, 40 plus years old, raising two sons. I got a daughter too, but I'm raising two sons. That I hope work hard like somebody like Peter Panther, who if they go going to college, they got a job too. And they doing the best they can. That's what I hope for my son. But these fucking savages walking around our community disguised as us. Wolves in sheep clothing, savages in black people clothing, killing us. A wolf will kill a sheep. Like I said, the Latinos, y'all new to it. You don't believe me? I look, look at what these two Latino women got to say, who probably refer to themselves as Latinx. And then I want you to listen to the sister who speaks after them. We can't support this this return to Giuliani, Bloomberg era policing. How can we make sure that if there are abuses within this new pilot pro project that is um, being rolled out in our city, that there's gonna be accountability for these officers? There are individuals in our society, those few that have shown their commitment to violence and the victimization of children, families, and communities that must not be free to walk among us. It's this daily gun violence that has the NYPD rolling out new measures.